Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on the Automatic Camera Preset Recall plugin in QSys. I already have a QSys design here and if you've seen the first tutorial, which I would recommend, then this will already look quite familiar. We have our Automatic Camera Preset Recall plugin down here, along with a bit of DSP where we're processing the microphone audio for the near end and we're also processing the far end audio so that the plugin knows what audio is going to the speakers. And we also have the Team Connect Ceiling 2 plugin to establish communications with the microphone. Here on the left, we can see three cameras that we've renamed Camera, Camera 2, and Camera 3. And these are connected to our camera router. And on the right hand side of that, we have two USB video bridges. Make note that you must name all of the components that you want to use inside this plugin. So that's why we've renamed the cameras and the camera router. And as soon as you see those names in italics, you will know that you've renamed it properly. With that, let's take a look inside the plugin. And you can see that it looks a little bit different from the first version of this plugin, because now we don't have four cameras, we actually have eight. And in addition to that, we have cameras nine to 16, which are called secondary cameras. The primary cameras work just as before. So for every camera that I add, I can then assign that to a particular zone in the microphone page. However, as an additional feature, I can now define a secondary camera for each primary camera. This means that if I already have a primary camera pointing at a zone and a new zone is triggered, the secondary camera will point there instead, but it won't be switched to until it's completed the move to that new zone, which means that you should never ever see a camera move, you should only see a clean cut. Of course, you can still use primary cameras without a secondary camera. Because of this new logic, it is now necessary to select a camera router in the plugin for all of this to work, even if you actually only have one camera in the design. As we move down this front page of the plugin, we get to PTZ switch delay. This hasn't really changed, it pretty much works exactly the same as before, but now the range is slightly different. Lastly, we have a default home position section, where we can choose a camera and choose a primary position and also a secondary position. At the moment, secondary position is greyed out because we don't have a secondary camera selected. Now for this project, I want camera and camera 3 to be linked together as a primary secondary pair. So I'm just going to select camera 3 here and then we have that available in the default home position if we want to choose a secondary position there. One thing to make note of is that the number above the combo boxes where we select the camera is the number that that camera should be wired to on the camera router. So you can see that camera is wired to input 1 and camera 3 is wired to input 9. It follows that our secondary cameras should always be wired to an input that is eight higher than our primary cameras. Now it's time to set up some camera positions. So I'm actually gonna turn off tracking here and I will click the bypass button to make sure that the camera preset recall plugin is not trying to recall presets while we're trying to set them up. Now I already have a home position for this camera. So let's load that and see where that's pointing. And I can see here in this camera block that this is a good home position, front and center on the table. What we're gonna do now is open up camera three and set up the same kind of position so that we can switch to either of these, depending on whether the primary or the secondary camera is being selected. Now, if I just copy and paste the position of the primary camera into the secondary camera field, we can see that those positions are very similar, but they're not identical because of course these cameras are not in exactly the same place. They're just positioned next to each other. So we'll adjust the secondary camera ever so slightly to get a very similar view to the primary camera, and then we'll hit save in our plugin to save that position. Next, let's look at the microphone tab, which again, looks slightly different to the first version of the plugin. As before, we're gonna select the Team Connect Ceiling 2 plugin name and the combo box at the top, and we have some LEDs to show us when that microphone is active. The key difference now is that we also have a vertical angle in addition to the horizontal angle, which we can optionally use to fine tune our zone positions. Now we can see that currently zone two is active and zone two does have a position for the primary camera, but no position for the secondary camera. So again, a good starting point because these two cameras are in a very similar position is to copy the primary position into the secondary position. And we can do that for our other zones as well. Now, all we need to do is open up the cameras and have a look at these primary and secondary positions and check that they do give us basically the same field of view. By hitting load on these two presets, I can compare these side by side. 
and we can see that the secondary camera just needs a little bit of adjustment to match the primary. Once we've done that, we can hit save again, and then we can load the presets for zone three. And again, we see that we need a little bit of adjustment on that secondary camera to match the primary. Remember, this is important because whenever a zone is selected, either the primary or the secondary camera might be used, depending on what one is already being used. And we want to make sure that the field of view is very, very similar so that the experience for the far end caller is always the same. So now that we have all of our zones saved, we'll go back to the main page and we'll enable the automatic camera preset recall by turning off the bypass button. And now I'll hand it over to my colleagues to test the system. So we can see there, as soon as Jens has started to speak, one of the cameras has pointed to zone four, and I think that's the secondary camera in this case. Now Thomas speaks again. The camera doesn't need to move because the primary camera was already pointing at him, so we just switch back to that. Now Jens is moving to the back of the table. And we can see that the secondary camera is moving to the zone three position, but we only switch to that camera after the move has been completed. And now back to Thomas and we go back to the primary camera, which still hasn't moved throughout this whole process. Now let's see what happens when we add another camera to cover a specific area in the room. We're going to increase the number of primary cameras to two and we're going to choose camera two as the named component camera two. We're going to assign this camera to zone five, which is covering some whiteboards on the right hand side of this room. Now we can see that when Thomas moves to zone five and starts to speak, we're just going to cut to camera two, which is pointing at zone five. And this is happening completely independently of the primary secondary pair that we set up previously. We can see there that when Thomas moved back into zone three, it switched back to the original primary secondary pair and didn't continue to use camera two. In fact, the only time you would have a tracking shot where the camera actually moves while it's visible would be if we had multiple zones with only one camera set and no secondary camera. Next, we'll look at one of the new features, which is vertical angle detection. This can be useful when you want to detect people sitting or standing and recall a different camera preset or when you have different zones which are in the same horizontal area, but different vertical areas. Here we've added another zone, and we're gonna have this be the same as zone two, except we're gonna distinguish this with a vertical angle change. We can set the current zone two to have a vertical angle range, which will be useful for when someone is sitting down. So that would be 35 to 80 in this case, where 90 degrees is directly below the microphone. Then for zone six, we'll set it up for zero to 34. So this will be when people are standing up. And for now, we'll just give this the same camera positions for primary and secondary, but it might be a good idea to adjust these to maybe point upwards slightly or perhaps zoom out. Here you can see that when Thomas starts to speak, it will detect that he's now standing up and will recall zone six. But bear in mind that we haven't changed the camera positions here. So it's just gonna load the primary position where it was on the secondary position previously. Now, as he goes to sit down, you'll see that zone two is recalled instead. It's important to point out here that we have two zones with the same horizontal coordinates, but they do have different vertical coordinates. And this is important. If the vertical coordinates overlapped as well as the horizontal coordinates, we might get some unintended consequences where the plugin doesn't know which zone we want to be in. Similarly, if we're not using any vertical angles at all, we need to make sure that all of our horizontal angles are unique for every zone and that the zones do not overlap. So that covers using the Team Connect Ceiling 2 with our plugin, but we also have a brand new feature, which is discrete microphones, where we can use any kind of microphone to trigger camera presets. Here we have a brand new design where we're using five simple boundary microphones that are coming into QSIS via Dante, but these microphones do not have any intelligence and cannot detect source angles. Instead, we will be using the audio activity on each channel to determine what camera preset we want to recall. 
To do this, we're going to click on our plugin and then we can go over to the properties section where we have a brand new option. Under type, you can change it from Sennheiser to discrete microphones. Once you do this, you get a channels option where you can select between different numbers of channels up to 90 channels. But for this, I think we just need 10. Now, what we're missing in this design at the moment is some processing to tell the plugin what microphones are active at any given time. We do have processing for the far end, which we can see at the top of the QCIS design, but we need to add in some way for it to know who is speaking on which microphone. To do this, we're going to add another auto mixer to the design. So we're gonna search for relative threshold and that's gonna bring in our gating automatic mic mixer. We'll set this for the right number of channels, which in this case is five. And we need to turn on the sidechain filter because our plugin is actually gonna set some sidechain properties for the best voice detection. We'll send our microphones to this automatic mic mixer after echo cancellation. And then we will name this in the same way that we've named our cameras and our camera router. Let's just call this mixer one. Now, because we've named the mixer, our plugin can pull all of the information from it and can set properties as well without us having to wire anything up. Let's open up the plugin. And when we do that, we can see that it looks exactly the same as it did before, even though we've changed the mode of operation. However, if we look up at the top, we can see that we don't have a tab for every microphone now. We have a tab for every group of 10 channels. Let's click on channels one to 10, and we can see here that we have 10 zones, one zone per channel. Now, all we need to do to connect our microphones to the plugin and tell the plugin which microphone is active is we will select our gating auto mixer by name in the combo box at the top of this page. Now that we've done that, if we go back to our auto mixer and open it up, we will see that the plugin has actually set certain properties automatically. For example, the sidechain filter, the threshold level above noise, and also the hold time have all been set to optimum values. In fact, it's probably best not to open it up anymore and just let the plugin handle everything. Now we can see that zone five has already been selected and that's because we're speaking into the microphone that's on channel five. In terms of setting up the cameras, the primary, secondary pairs, all of that is exactly the same as it is when using the Sennheiser Team Connect Ceiling 2 microphone. But now we have one microphone channel per zone. Now, as soon as Thomas enables tracking on this plugin again, we will see it working based off of the five boundary microphones that are in this room. The zone numbers are slightly different to before, but we can see as soon as Yen starts speaking in zone one, the correct camera preset is recalled. Now Thomas is speaking in zone four, and we will see again that we load the preset for zone four. We can see that the plugin is working very similarly to before, except now we have five microphones, obviously, rather than one. So there we have it. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial of the automatic camera preset recall plugin in QSIS, and we'll see you again next time.